Welcome to our video on ECG changes in STEMI versus non-STEMI myocardial infarction. Today, we'll discuss the differences in electrocardiogram findings between these two types of heart attacks, their significance, and the role of ECG in diagnosis and treatment. Let's get started. A myocardial infarction, or heart attack, occurs when blood flow to the heart muscle is blocked, leading to damage or death of the heart muscle cells. There are two main types, STEMI and non-STEMI. Let's dive into the differences between them. In a STEMI or ST elevation myocardial infarction, the coronary artery is typically completely blocked, leading to severe ischemia that affects the entire thickness of the heart muscle wall. This type of ischemia is called transmural ischemia. It is a more severe type of heart attack characterized by ST segment elevation on an electrocardiogram. In contrast to STEMI, non-STEMI, or non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, is characterized by partial blockage of a coronary artery or temporary reduction in blood flow. This results in ischemia that affects only the innermost layer of the heart muscle wall, known as the subendocardium. This type of ischemia is called subendocardial ischemia and does not exhibit ST segment elevation on an electrocardiogram. Transmural myocardial infarction is characterized by ischemia and ultimately necrosis of a portion of the entire, or nearly the entire, thickness of the left ventricular wall. Patients who present with acute myocardial infarction typically have underlying atherosclerotic coronary artery disease. The pathophysiology of acute ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, or STEMI, and the subsequent evolving Q wave myocardial infarction most often relates to the occlusion of one of the coronary arteries due to a ruptured atherosclerotic plaque followed by the formation of a clot at this site. The clot in the so-called culprit artery is composed of platelets and fibrin, blocking blood flow downstream. Other factors such as cocaine use, coronary artery dissections, coronary emboli, and other factors can also cause or contribute to acute STEMI. Large transmural myocardial infarctions generally produce changes in both myocardial depolarization, seen in the QRS complex, and myocardial repolarization, seen in the STT complex. The earliest ECG changes observed with acute transmural ischemia or infarction typically occur in the STT complex in sequential phases. The complete occlusion of the coronary artery in STEMI and subsequent transmural ischemia require immediate reperfusion therapy to restore blood flow and minimize damage to the heart muscle. Now that we understand the basics of ST segment elevation, transmural ischemia, and acute myocardial infarction, let's explore the sequential phases of ECG changes that occurred in STEMI. There are two main phases. The acute phase is characterized by the appearance of ST segment elevations and sometimes tall positive or hyperacute T waves in multiple leads, typically two or more. This phase is referred to as STEMI. The evolving phase takes place hours or days later and is marked by deep T wave inversions in the leads that previously exhibited ST elevations. Transmural myocardial infarctions can also be described in terms of the location of the infarct. Anterior refers to the involvement of the anterior or lateral wall of the left ventricle, whereas inferior indicates the involvement of the inferior or diaphragmatic wall of the left ventricle. The anatomic location of the infarct determines the leads in which typical ECG patterns appear. For example, with an acute anterior wall myocardial infarction, the ST segment elevations and tall hyperacute T waves appear in one or more of the anterior leads, which are chest leads V1 to V6 and extremity leads D1 and a VL. Conversely, with an inferior wall myocardial infarction, the ST segment elevations and tall hyperacute T waves are seen in the inferior leads D2, D3, and a VF. As we continue to analyze ECG changes in STEMI, it's crucial to understand the concept of reciprocal changes. These changes can provide valuable insights into the diagnosis of myocardial infarctions. Reciprocal changes refer to the fact that the anterior and inferior leads often display inverse patterns. In the case of an anterior infarction with ST segment elevations in two or more of the leads V1 to V6, D1, and a VL, ST segment depression is frequently observed in leads D2, D3, and a VF. 
On the other hand, with an acute inferior wall infarction, leads D2, D3, and a VF exhibit ST segment elevation, while reciprocal ST depressions are often seen in one or more of the leads V1 to V3, T1, and a VL. The ST segment elevation associated with acute myocardial infarction is known as the current of injury, which indicates that damage has occurred to the epicardial or outer layer of the heart due to severe ischemia. The exact reasons that acute myocardial infarction produces ST segment elevation are complex and not fully understood. Normally, the ST segment is isoelectric, meaning that no net current flow is occurring at this time. Myocardial infarction alters the electrical charge on the myocardial cell membranes in several ways, resulting in abnormal current flow or current of injury, which then produces ST segment deviations. When we have non-STEMI, myocardial infarction is limited to the subendocardium, the inner layer of the ventricle, and primarily associated with ST segment depressions, rather than primary ST elevations. Now you might wonder how subendocardial ischemia can occur without transmural ischemia or infarction. It's because the subendocardium is the most vulnerable to ischemia due to its distance from the coronary blood supply and high pressure of the ventricular cavity. So this inner layer of the ventricle can become ischemic while the outer layer or epicardium remains normally perfused with blood. Treatment for NSTEMI may involve medications to prevent clot formation and depending on the severity of the blockage and the patient's risk factors, non-emergent interventions such as percutaneous coronary intervention or coronary artery bypass grafting. The most common ECG change with subendocardial ischemia is ST segment depression with a characteristic squared off shape. Acute transmural ischemia produces ST segment elevation, while subendocardial ischemia produces ST segment depression except in lead of ER, which often shows ST elevation. Angvina pectoris, a symptom of coronary artery disease, is experienced as a dull, burning, or boring substernal pressure or heaviness. Many patients with classic angina have an ECG pattern of subendocardial ischemia with ST segment depression seen during an attack, but not all. Exercise or stress testing can be used to diagnose coronary artery disease by recording the ECG while the patient is being exercised under controlled conditions. Subendocardial ischemia often produces ST segment depressions in multiple leads. In some cases of non-STEMI, the ECG may remain entirely normal during episodes of ischemia. In others, the STT complex may display only subtle changes, such as slight T-wave flattening or minimal T-wave inversions, which are nonspecific STT changes. Nonspecific STT changes may be abnormal, but they are not definite indicators of ischemia. They may be a sign of ischemic heart disease, but they may also be caused by many other conditions, including drug effects, hyperventilation, and electrolyte abnormalities. Understanding the differences in ischemic patterns between STEMI and NSTEMI is crucial for accurate diagnosis, appropriate treatment, and improved patient outcomes. Recognizing the type of ischemia involved in each myocardial infarction can help guide clinical decisions and ensure the best possible care for each individual patient, ultimately leading to better recovery and long-term prognosis. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. Please share this video with your colleagues, subscribe to our channel, and give us a positive evaluation. We hope to see you soon in our next video.